Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, I'm going to give you a recap of the horrible accident that happened in Moscow the other day with a Sukhoi Superjet 100 that made an emergency landing and burst into flames. I'm going to give you some of the observations that, that I made when I watched the footage from this accident. Uh, but as always, when it comes to accidents like this, I'm not going to be um, guessing on the reason behind it. But um, stay tuned. Wind 310 at 16, Right, so when I came back from my trip to Sweden on Sunday, I was met by the horrible news that a Sukhoi Superjet 100 had crashed in, um, in Moscow after a, an in-flight emergency. And um, as the time goes on, you get to learn more and more about the background, but we're still waiting for the crucial initial update to the um, accident investigations. We don't really know exactly what's happened. What we have heard so far though, is uh, testimony from the pilots saying that they were uh, hit by lightning uh, during the climb at approximately flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet and that they subsequently lost communication and several in-flight systems. We know that they lost communication because there were no communication between the aircraft and air traffic control during the incident, but they did squawk the code, which indicates um, loss of um, radios, which is 7600 on the transponder. And they also upgraded that to the international emergency code, which is 7700 after a while. And that indicates that they didn't only have problems with radio, they had problems with other systems as well. Now, there's been a lot of discussions whether or not the pilots should have dumped fuel. Now, that is a completely unnecessary discussion because the Sukhoi Superjet doesn't have, nor does it need, the capability to dump fuel. Dumping fuel is for aircraft that has a significantly higher maximum takeoff weight than maximum landing weight, and that's typically long haul aircraft. Short to medium haul aircraft doesn't have this capability. You have the possibility to go into a holding pattern and burn off fuel if you think that that's really needed. But if you have a serious emergency, our priority is always to just go back and land, even if it's slightly overweight. And that's what the pilots did on this occasion. Um, there are several videos out there on, on YouTube at the moment taken by passengers, both during the, um, the initial approach down to the first bounce and to, um, during the actual you know, following uh, fire. And I'll talk a little bit more about the fire in a second because I used to be an airport firefighter, so we, we did study these kind of things. Anyway, the aircraft came in at what looks like a very high airspeed. They, um, they made several bounces, uh, one of which was a very high bounce. And um, after that high bounce, the aircraft seemed to have hit the, the, the tail on the runway, potentially breaking the landing gear because they couldn't maintain directional control. So they, um, they burst into fire and they weared off the runway to the left of the runway. Following that, we could see that an almost immediate evacuation started, which is in line with uh, emergency procedures. We don't know if this was uh, actually called out by the flight crew, because if the in-flight systems were damaged, the uh, internal communication systems might be damaged as well. But, and this is my first observation, um, every flight attendant are instructed to initiate evacuation by themselves without any command from the flight deck if they see, for example, fire. So if the aircraft is in an unusual attitude, which indicates breaking up of the aircraft, or if they have fire, or if they have uncontrolled smoke, or if they've ditched in water. In that case, they will start to, um, to evacuate, even if they don't hear anything from the flight deck. And that definitely seems to be the case here. Um, the aircraft was only evacuated during the two front emergency exits and that also is in line with standard procedures. The cabin crew are instructed to look out through their little windows. That's why there are those little windows in the doors and see what the outside conditions are. And if they see that there are fire outside, well, obviously they're not going to, you know, put a slide out into the fire. So they are going to stop the passengers that's coming towards them, they're going to redirect them towards an exit that is safe to exit. And in this case, since the whole back of the aircraft was engulfed in flames, it was only the forward two exits that could be used. Okay? But here comes another, another thing that I want to emphasize and a reason that I wanted to do this video in the first place. Now, if you're a passenger 
and you find yourself in a situation where an evacuation is being, is being commanded by the flight crew, the cabin crew, you have to leave all your personal belongings behind. Now, I cannot overemphasize how important this is. Do not try to find your hand luggage or your laptop or your passport or whatever it might be. It's not important. And the reason for this is that every second counts in the case of an evacuation, right? You looking for your hand luggage or even taking your hand luggage with you is going to delay the, the evacuation that little, little bit. And if you think about it, if everyone is doing that, it might actually stop some people from evacuating in the first place because of that tiny little increase in time that it takes and that is accumulated throughout the aircraft. So if you hear evacuation, you take your children with you and you run to the evacuation exit door that is being instructed by the cabin crew and you jump out and you get away from the aircraft. That is your job and the only thing that you need to do. And the reason I'm saying this is because we could see on the videos taken from the evacuation that people were actually taking their, some of their hand luggage with them, which is not acceptable. Right? Now, the next thing that, that some people have been asking me about um, regarding this incident is why did, the, um, why did the flight crew, why did the pilots evacuate using the, the escape um, ropes from the cockpit? Why didn't they just go out the normal doors? Now, in order to understand this, um, you need to understand a little bit about the timing of when they evacuated. Because um, we, when we are being instructed, you know, if we are in an evacuation situation, especially when you have an uncontrolled fire, then we are supposed to do our procedures, make sure that the aircraft is completely set up for an evacuation. But once that's done, we pull the CVR circuit breaker if we have time, we bring our passenger manifest so we know how many people are on board, and we evacuate. All right? It's not this, this idea of staying behind until you're the last is not really an official policy. It's up to the individual pilot and captain to decide to do that, but we are instructed to evacuate as soon as we can. Right? And we're supposed to do that through the normal evacuation exits, through the emergency of exits. So we're supposed to leave the cockpit and get out first officer to the right, the captain to the left, and assist with the evacuation outside. Make sure that people are getting away from the aircraft, are jumping out as quickly as possible. Okay? Now, if, you, if, if you're actually sitting inside and maybe doing checklists and stuff, and it takes a little bit of time, and everyone's actually evacuated, then what can happen in a case like this is that the fire engines, the fire trucks that's coming in, starting to fight the fire from the back of the aircraft. Now, when they hit the aircraft with, um, with their water cannon or the foam cannons, what will happen is that every, all the smoke that's billowing out from the aircraft is now going to be forced in and forward. This is actually part of, um, of what we're supposed to do. When I was an airport firefighter myself, the first thing that we did was of course to, to fight the fire, but also to ventilate the aircraft. And you'd do so by actually shooting water towards one of the emergency exits, providing that there are not passengers coming out. We're, we're thinking that the aircraft is now completely evacuated. But you shoot water towards one exit, that will push all of the smoke, flames towards the back of the aircraft and out. Well, in this case, if they're fighting the aircraft from the back and they're trying to, to extinguish the fire, now that smoke is going to be pushed forward. And you can actually see that on the videos on YouTube. And so you see how the smoke is being pushed out to the, um, the emergency exit and to the cockpit. And if you're in the cockpit then, and you open the door, and you're met with this, this wall of hot smoke and possibly f uh, flames coming out, well then that might, or well, that will not be a possible way to, uh, to evacuate. So then you might have to evacuate through the, uh, the cockpit windows. Now, <clears throat> when we're talking about, when we're talking about in-flight fires, fire, and I've made a video about this, it's, it's old, but the information is still correct. Fire is the worst thing that can ever happen to a pilot. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a complete remake of that video just to show you guys how quickly things go out of control once a fire starts. And this is why, once again, I want to emphasize that evacuating without taking your stuff with you is the most important thing that you can do in a situation like this. Okay? Now, um, the fire trucks managed to extinguish the fire after about 45 minutes. Uh, it looks like the total death toll of this horrible accident was 41. Uh, there was 11 injuries and I think 35 people who managed to escape through the, um, through the exits. The, um, 
investigative commission of the uh, Federation of Russia, or the Russian Federation, is doing an investigation. It's also the equivalent of the NTSB in America. So we are likely um, to start getting um, an indication of why this happened in the first place. You know, maybe in a few weeks or so, when they have, uh, when they have seen the black boxes, they have listened to the uh, cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder. Um, and when that comes, then then we'll know more about why this happened in the first place. But I made this video for one reason, and one reason only, and that is to show you guys that, you know, to follow the, the cabin crew's commands in a situation like this is absolutely crucial. I cannot overemphasize how important it is that you do evacuate without delay and without taking your stuff with you. Now, another point that I want to make as well is that it feels like um, when you're following the media nowadays, it feels like the, um, the safety of the airline world is going in the wrong direction, right? And it feels like that for a couple of reasons, both because during several years, um, up until the last part of 2018, we didn't have any, well, almost none, um, uh, death in commercial aviation. It was an absolutely fantastic period in the aviation safety. But now, from the, uh, the first crash of the Boeing 737 MAX um, in Indonesia and then the subsequent one, we've had a few, like, it, it's gone down a little bit. But this is what the statistical people would refer to as a statistical blip. It is not because the entire safety of the airline world is going downhill. It is because Things like this will happen, and sometimes these things happen very close to each other. And you get a feeling, because we humans are built to try to find patterns, you get a feeling that, oh, now it's becoming more dangerous to fly. But that's not the case, okay? There are tens of thousands of flights every day carrying millions of people safely all over the globe without anything happening. In fact, if you look at the statistics of it, it's never been safer to fly. It is, you know, many, many, many times more safer to fly an aircraft across the world than it is for you to take your car and drive to your nearest city in most cases. Um, but we will never reach 100% safety. And the fact is that these type of accidents and incidents, they generate a huge interest in the, in the general population, which is why the media always seizes on this. And if they feel that there is a general higher interest, like it's been the last six months, for aviation safety, well then they will start to find things that generally wouldn't even make the news, like um, minor runway excursions without anyone being injured, and they will blow it up into the newspapers and get a, even a further sense that things are more dangerous than they are. So please keep that in mind. Remember that flying and it's, it's a very, very safe mode of transport, and that me, and my colleagues in the aviation business, we are working every day to try to make your trip as safe and as comfortable as humanly possible. And we use horrible accidents like this and incidents. We learn from them and we make sure that we take all of these lessons and implement them to continue to grow the aviation safety throughout the world. Okay? And that's it. Now, I know that you will have questions about this. Some of the questions I will not be able to answer, but I want you to come into the Mentor Aviation app because this is why I created it. I created it so that you guys, even if you're just a passenger who, who wants to ask critical questions about your flight that you're going to do, you need to have a positive and constructive place to do so. So down here in the description of this video, you have the download links, it's completely free. I want you to register, go into the chat and the coming forums inside of the app and discuss this. I will try to answer it if I can. I'm not always going to be there, but there's going to be other commercial pilots, pilots in training or other aviation enthusiasts in there. And we will all try to help. So if you're afraid of flying, if you're a nervous flyer, the app is perfect for you. We will do our best to explain things to you. What is that noise? Why is it done like that? Why did this happen? So come in there and join me. Um, have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. And I'll see you next time. Bye.